Okay, good morning. I want to tape this because <coughs> some of you are in Dublin. Hello to you. Um, so that's why we tape this uh, summary lecture. Um, <coughs> I had to move it to this uh, this week because of uh, a collision with uh, with a PhD defense, which takes place next week. And uh, if any of you wants to attend, as in the audience, it's your it's your uh, welcome to, to do that if you if you like to. Um, the original plan was to to uh, to have a group work this this week, uh, but I will we cannot have that. But I will present the um, exercise for you. Uh, it's placed on Fronter, and it's accompanied by by a spreadsheet, which you can use for for solving uh, parts of this exercise. Um, <coughs> so we start with uh, with that, and uh, after I have um, presented this, I will uh, summarize the course. Uh, this is um, a case connected to crossing of the Oslo Fjord. Uh, this is uh, a region where most people live in this country, which is rather sparsely populated. You have Oslo here, and there are cities on both sides of this fjord. Uh, the main connection today is a ferry connection running uh, between um, the two cities of uh, Horten and Moss here. And there is a, a subsea tunnel crossing here, also today. But um, even so, this is the dominant uh, way of crossing this fjord. There is a lot of interaction between east and west uh, because of the rather populated, densely populated area. Um, <coughs> the European Union, <coughs> they set certain demands on, on, uh, on tunnels. And uh, there are regulations saying that a subsea tunnel like this, goes under the fjord, needs to have two separate uh, carriageways because of uh, safety and, and security, for safety and security reasons. Um, <coughs> if you have driven through the subsea tunnel here, it's one, just one, uh, one tunnel. Here we need two. And that is because of the level of traffic. When you have traffic above a certain level, certain threshold, you need two tunnels. And that was not, <coughs> those regulations were not in effect uh, when this one was built. Uh, there has been a lot of, uh, of uh, accidents. A couple of years ago there was a fire where, which nearly killed, killed people. And uh, <coughs> that is why one is now planning to have a second tunnel crossing here. There are also plans for, uh, for tunnels further south to really replace this ferry connection. But that is not, not a part of this, uh, this study and it is, uh, it is uh, perhaps uh, in, a, in a very long distant, uh, very distant future you might have, uh, you might have uh, a crossing further south as well. But we will concentrate on this one. Um, <coughs> so. The problem that we're going to, to address here is, uh, is to do a cost-benefit analysis of this crossing. Um, then we need to have at least two alternatives. We need a base case and we need uh, a case where we actually do something. Um, <coughs> because the regulations demands us to build a second tunnel here. It is not an option to just go forward with 
the tunnel that is already there, right? So the option is to close the whole thing and just rely upon the ferry connection. Um, so I have uh, presented you with some, some data. Um, because we could think of not building a second tunnel here, but a bridge. Because a bridge is not, is not uh, subjected to, uh, to the same kinds of, of regulations. And it is also a way of, you could operate both, both a tunnel and a bridge. So, uh, <coughs> we could think of that as, as an option here. And then, <coughs> we, have a, we have a city here called Rebak, which is uh, a very scenic little place. I actually recommend you to go there if you want to do some sightseeing in the area. And they <coughs> are not very much in favor of a bridge because it will destroy, uh, in their opinion, it will, will destroy the, the p uh, picturesque landscape. So there will be a landscape intrusion effect of that bridge. So they would actually prefer a subsea tunnel to be, uh, to be built. <coughs> so uh, I'll just describe this, this case that they are these people are, are not in favor of, uh, of a bridge. So <coughs> you may have a kind of a non-market good situation here. You need to address that issue as a part of, uh, of the analysis. Not perhaps the quantitative, not the quantitative part, but you need to discuss. I will come back to that. <coughs> um, for the tunnel, there may be problems with, uh, with rock quality, which uh, could lead to cost overruns. So this is the sort of backdrop for the, for the whole thing. Um, there are some traffic forecasts with a, with, a, with a percentage growth per year, which can be varied. Uh, and. Uh, it's a 95% probability that it will be between minus one and plus three percent. So there is an upside <coughs> uh, to this, but you could also face actually a, a slight reduction in traffic over this, uh, over this bridge or tunnel. Um, <coughs> some data are given here. You have traffic volume which is, uh, which is uh, the present situation uh, here with the ferry connection. And we have forecasted effects here in the first year of opening of the new, be it a bridge or a tunnel. Slightly lower traffic for the subsea tunnel than the bridge due to uh, the fact that uh, in a subsetone, you need to go down deep and then up again, which uh, and, and some people actually are not in favor of using tunnels at all, so they will prefer the ferry. And uh, <coughs> maybe also some heavy goods vehicles will prefer to use the ferry instead of having to to do all the braking and all the all the and and then struggle their way up again from from the lowest point under the fjord. So that's why the traffic volume is slightly less. And that's also why the driving time is slightly longer using the tunnel. Uh, <coughs> so the average travel time for a, for a user, a motorist, is, is uh, listed here. The average travel distance is listed here. And here you have some, uh, you have some investment costs with probabilities. So, uh, and you need to, to use that for a, for a purpose. You see here that for the bridge, 
the, the spread in cost estimates are not that big. For the tunnel, it's bigger because of this, this uh, problems that may be there connected to the rock quality. And then you have the operating costs of this system. Ferry, subsea tunnel, and the bridge. It's more <coughs> expensive to operate tunnels normally because you need to, to pump a lot of water out of the subsea tunnels. So this tunnel right next door here, uh, <coughs> it takes, I, I did some calculations, I think, you could heat around 10 houses of a normal size for the energy that is used for pumping the water. It's quite, quite significant. Uh, there are more data. <coughs> you have uh, time, value of time. This is uh, time cost per hour for various travel purposes. You have the distribution of travel purpose, uh, which sums up to 100%. <coughs> and uh, you have average weekly operating costs, which is not, they are the same. We don't care too much about differences between heavy goods vehicles and, and lighter vehicles in this case. So um, we, Simply, um, and we d I described the situation here, um, where the fair connection will be closed if the extended fixed link is built. In this case, we can assume that, even if, even if it may not happen in in practice, but for uh, for the sake of of the of this uh, exercise, we can we can assume that. I have described some, <coughs> some more qualitative effects uh, related to employment effects. Uh, some effects connected to, to labor markets uh, on both sides of the fjord and, um <coughs> and so on. So, on to the, to the problems that I want you to, to discuss and, uh, and answer. Um, the first one is to, to write a description of a possible approach for investigating this landscape intuition uh, effect for the city of Trebak. Describe adequate economic welfare measures that can be used in such an analysis. Which one do you find most convenient? And then state the reasons for your answer. So it's not enough to just say that, well, I think this welfare measure should be used, but you should also state the reason why you think it is the most convenient one to use. <coughs> the second. Present a figure that shows the actual change in consumer surplus per trip for an average road user when the fixed link is built. Then you need to do some use of the data from these two tables. Um, <coughs> you need to calculate the generalized cost for both alternatives, both the bridge and the tunnel, and also the ferry, of course. Then you can use the, the um, Excel model, which is placed in front of I'll show you that one in a, in a minute, to solve <coughs> B, C, and D in problem three here, uh, which is uh, to present a general formula for calculating the present value using the data and the calculations from problem two, carry out the cost benefit analysis calculate the, <coughs> the net present value and the benefit cost ratio and to say something about which is turns out to be the most profitable alternative in terms of these two measures. <coughs> then you can do a sensitivity ana analysis based on the traffic data and the interest rate 
and the, the interval is, is given in, in above in the, in the introduction. And then reported changes in that present value. <coughs> and then the assume that the alternative to the subset tunnel is the one that will be built. And then uh, you can, uh, I ask you to, to discuss the, the result from here up against the visual intuition problem. At least the least amount of money that the community is willing to pay to avoid the visual intrusion of the bridge. The community or the society is perhaps better. So you should be able to, to calculate the minimum uh, amount <coughs> that uh, the society ha is willing to pay to, to go for, for the bridge. Uh, four, present an overview of the possible winners and losers of a fixed link. What kind of information are you missing to be able to present the monetary value of the benefits and losses for these groups? And that requires a bit of, of free thinking based on the information that is given in the, in the, um, in the text here. Five, when the construction costs were made, the following consideration was made when we did the construction cost calculations. Then we are <coughs> on to try to calculate the shade of shadow price of labor, labor, which we had in a, in a lecture. And there is a, an example of how to do that placed on Fronter from lecture number five or six or something. Should make it quite straightforward to, to do that. Uh, before I take questions, I can show you the Excel. You download this from Fronter and you work with it on your, uh, your computer. Don't work with it in Fronter because I don't know what will happen then. I think nasty things can happen, which may cause a lot of, of trouble, at least for me. But you, <coughs> you actually work within these cells with the thick frames. With the interest rate, the growth rate, investment costs, annual average daily traffic, uh, generalized cost ferry and bridge tunnel, and so on. So you can, uh, you can use it and, uh, and you will get the results, and you will also have a graphical re representation of the results here when you when you plug in the numbers. So we need to <coughs> solve problem two and use the results that you get there, and uh, together with the information in the in the exercise, plug it in these cells, and then you will get get the results. And uh, you will have the annual numbers here. When we, this is just a counter for years, up to 40. And for each year you get, you get the change in operating costs and so on, which will be, you don't need to do anything here. That will solve itself. So is this okay, so far? I will, I will present a, a rough sketch of the solutions to this exercise in due course. I will not do that tomorrow, not even the day after tomorrow, but quite... I will consider to do it before the exam. <laughs> But uh, <coughs> but not to give the wrong incentives, I will I will I will wait until quite close to the exam to, to post the, the the solutions. But um, but you will not get the full answers from that uh, from that solution either. So you need to work a bit with this to uh, to sort it out. I think. 
Any questions? Okay. It's not easy to ask questions on, at this stage. But I mean, uh, if you struggle and, uh, and you are stuck with, uh, let's say, uh, problem two here, you should just, uh, which I, I don't think you will have much heavy problems with this one, but. In the exam, we'll, uh, we'll have uh, a similar uh, exercise. Uh, I will, you will not, you will not have, uh, you will not need any computer. So, but you will, you, but, but to do this will, of course, be of relevance to the exam, to put it that way. And the same with the, with the previous exercise. It covers topics that are uh, sort of uh, central in this, in this course. That's why I give it at this, this stage. So, uh, I'm not saying that you get exactly the same as this, but but it will most certainly be of uh, be of help to for the exam. Can we add also the solution of the last uh, exercise? Yeah. Okay. Mm. <coughs> you will. Uh, since this is a new course, uh, I don't have any old exams to show you because that's normally uh, what you get. You get old exams, but. But you have these two uh, exercises, and uh, and I am not uh, I'm not fond of asking questions at the exam that is, let's say, at the fringe of of the course. It's uh, it will be well within the central parts of the course. And um, <coughs> when I summarized. Uh, as I will start with within not too long. Um, uh, I will mention a few topics, but there might be other topics as well that could be could be relevant to the exam. But uh, topics that are covered throughout the the course and during the lectures uh, will be of, of relevance, and you will have all the printed and written material with you at the exam. Mm -hmm. So this will be an open book exam. <laughs> yes. yeah, we, we can use the, the slide. Uh, yeah, yeah. Use everything. You can use the slides, you can use the book, you can use the papers that are posted on front, or you can use everything. Was there a computer? Uh, no computer. <laughs> no computer, you can, you can have a... You can have a calculator of this size, okay. <laughs> uh, but uh, but uh, but no computer. Uh, calculator with empty memory, of course. But but um, uh, there, so what I'm saying is that there will be no very advanced calculations at the exam. Um, but I will. I normally have a preference for uh, a mix of, uh, of a case that you're going to solve. This is one such case. Uh, and some theoretical questions. And I, I normally like you to th I would like you to think in terms of if you are in a situation where you are actually supposed to to deliver something to your boss. He asks you or she asks you to, to solve this case, uh, something like this, and then answer some, and then elaborate on some theoretical questions that may be rel related to that case, for instance. And I'll have that on my desk within four hours. That's the time that you have for the exam, right? So that is, that is the attitude that, uh, that I will ask you to sort of have when you go to the exam. You have this, you're going to solve this, and you get paid on a scale from A to F. <laughs> so the exam is one exercise, very big, with a lot of questions? Uh, the exam will be, I, I, I would say that I would, you will get a case. 
we, we need to do some calculations, but you don't need a spreadsheet to do that. And then you will have some theoretical questions, okay. which may be related to the case, but I may also take the liberty to, to, okay, okay. to ask you questions that are not directly related to the case. So that will be the, the, the form that I usually so the use. So exam is, is different from the, the last, uh, the last uh, exam, because I saw uh, the exam of the, the last years uh, uh, yeah, is different, not, not this, uh, this course is, is given, it's given for the first time this okay. year. So I don't have any, there are no older exams okay. in this course. But if you, I don't know, is, is the older exams published? Uh, yeah, if you go to, if you go to, uh, let's say the 2010 exam for log 711, you will see approximately the way I used to do it, with a case and like three or four questions in addition to that. <coughs> That is also an open book exam. Um, so instead of, <coughs> of just replicating from your mind what you have read in a book, I wanted to try to think in terms of this is something that should be sold and someone is going to read it and hopefully be very satisfied with what they read. Because that's how it will work when you are uh, employed somewhere, that you get some task with a deadline and then you have to solve, solve it. Okay? Um, I am sorry, but I there is something <coughs> wrong with the synchronization. So I just need to, to get a, uh, a USB and collect the lecture. Okay, so a couple of minutes break. <coughs>